This is a RAMP video practicum on community engagement. I'm Akash Suchek of CAA Advancing Art and Design. I'm here with Eric Siegel of the Harn Museum of Art. And today we're going to be talking about community engagement. So Eric, I wanted to start by asking you, what is the Bishop Study Center here at the Harn and how does it work to uh, facilitate uh, community members sort of participating in the activities of the museum? That's a wonderful question. I think of the Bishop Study Center as one of the most important spaces of our museum because it serves not just as a welcome space, but as a launching pad to the galleries. So it's called a study center, and it does have books um, related to the collections and exhibitions, but that's half of its personality. It's also an engagement space that uh, has projects and activities and hands-on manipulable, manipulables that visitors of all ages, really, from tots to teenagers and college students, use to explore uh, aspects of art, um, themes from the collections uh, and exhibitions that they can then take with them into the galleries. So this is great for us to connect with especially families. As I say, it's for all audiences, but families and children are the future museum goers. Parents often don't know how to visit a museum because it may not be something they grew up with, but they're making efforts to bring their children. So the, the Bishop Study Center provides them with the tools they need to engage their children in the galleries as they go forward. Uh, so that's one space that we really are find beloved because it creates so many new museum lovers. Can you tell us a little bit about the Head Start program? Thank you. Um, the Head Start program is a program we piloted last year and has have continued this year as a way to make the museum accessible and relevant to uh, young children who don't otherwise, who might otherwise not have the opportunity to come to the museum. As you know, Head Start serves socioeconomically deprived or underserved students, um, but it reaches a huge audience that really deserves access to the museum. So we worked with the College of Education um, in the last couple of years to develop a program which was um, sort of well-founded in principles of education, appropriate for the four-year-olds who want, we wanted to bring to the museum, and accessible to both teachers, children, and families, so that we could provide funds through this program to provide buses that could bring students to the museum, engage students in learning about um, uh, curriculum appropriate um, topics such as math topics, quantity, shape, color, line, um, that they could then explore in the galleries which would be relevant to the, t with the issues the teachers were pursuing back in the classroom. The kids also make art while they're here during their visit, art which gets displayed in the school hallways and as it creates an enormous sense of pride for the students to see the museum they created the art back at their schools. And finally we go to the schools to meet with the children and the parents in a parent engagement activity. Uh, we have a wonderful book we produced, ABC Art by the Letters. It's the alphabet through Harn Museum Art, and we give a copy to each student. Uh, so the students have an experience making art with the parents. They have an experience at the museum. They feel welcomed as if this is a place that's meaningful and right for them and that they are welcome at. And their parents themselves are engaged in that activity. For us, it's really important to create and expand audiences. If you were to advise a museum professional working in the field about how to go about sort of starting a program like the Head Start program, how would you suggest that they, they begin? Where, where should right. they begin? Well, I think it's important to find the, the right principal and the right school to start with. And to pi we piloted with a single school to prove to ourselves that it made sense for us that we could work with an entire school. Last year, once it was up and running, we served 500 students. The previous year, many fewer. Um, and of course, we had to, you, you, you have to establish the funds to make this possible. Um, so my advice is really to find that school and to find the donors who believe that such a project is worthy of exploring and then to build it together from there. If you're at a university and you have the resources of a college of education, they are tremendous partners who can make sure that your assumptions about what is educationally appropriate are the right ones. Uh, so I'd say it's really about building those partnerships and starting on a small level. Once we proved our concept, we were able to attract private foundation funds and private donor funds that have allowed us to continue the program and to expand it. We expect to reach um, all Head Start programs in the area in the next two years. We've noticed a lot of diversity and inclusion initiatives here at the Harn, uh, including one which includes in the didactics made by an immigrant. 
Can you tell us a little bit about your initiatives here and how they can be shared uh, across uh, different academic art museums across the state? Sure. So um, we are at the tail end of our five-year plan in which we, met, we made uh, building a sense of belonging as one of our key goals. And that has really um, steered our effort to think about who we aren't addressing and how we can be addressing and inviting in um, broader audiences. So under that five-year plan, we've continued to explore um, working with diverse audiences from people with autism to people with limited or no vision to underserved audiences in poor communities to African-American communities in our area and to work with them to make them feel invited and welcome and as if our, and to demonstrate that our collections are relevant and meaningful. You ask about the Made by an Immigrant um, uh, effort in particular. Um, in recent years, we've felt that immigrants have been um, maligned in public media, in public discourse, in politics, and we were concerned that um, our museum represents broadly diverse cultures. Our, our um, university is enriched by the presence of immigrants here today, here in the past, who have helped make the museum, helped make the university. So with that in mind, we started an initiative to identify artists in our collection who are immigrants, or who were immigrants, and to identify on the, them in, with labels on the wall, which simply say, made by an immigrant. So that visitors can themselves think about and reflect on the meaning of immigrant, con immigrant contributions to artistic culture as represented in our collections. Great. Finally, I wanted to ask you about the teletours that you've conducted here at the Harn, uh, working with uh, transplant patients and how they've contributed to the Rock Garden. Right. So our Asian wing was opened in 2012 and it included a rock garden, often associated with Zen Buddhism, a garden that's raked by a volunteer who's passionate about Japanese culture and has continued to explore rock gardens. So initially we didn't know what to do with that space except to make it attractive. But we began to think about the role of rock gardens in terms of um, meditation and self-focus and self-health. Health. And it led to discussions with the UF Center for Arts and Medicine, which is very experienced in connecting the arts to healing, to working in hospitals. And with them, we developed a program for transplant patients who have been in hospital, sometimes for weeks and months, uh, awaiting a transplant which is, you know, is a very sterile environment. No matter how enriched it is, it's limiting. And these are patients who have to be fairly isolated um, in, order to avoid, uh, in order to avoid infection, so they're um, operation ready when the transplant um, organ is available. So we provided them with a plan of our rock garden, and we provided them with tiny miniature um, 3D printed rakes that they could then rake their own designs in the rock garden which I think was a very pleasing and meditative and thoughtful activity. But the goal was bigger than that. It was to take those designs by hospitalized patients and to make them realized in the garden itself. So our volunteer, and as, along with the uh, support of landscape architecture students, rakes the garden according to the design of the hospitalized patient and realizes it in three dimensions. The teletour is when we bring together the uh, the gardeners who are doing the design with the hospitalized patient in a really, um, uh, I can only say, uh, inspiring teletour in which the patients get to get out of the museum, not physically, but mentally, spiritually, um, emotionally, and into the garden that they have created and to see it come to life um, and to have a discussion with the gardeners who have, who have you know, shared with them their design. Sounds like a wonderful and meaningful program. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. That concludes our community engagement uh, ramp video practicum. Thanks again, Eric. Thanks, Akash, and I look forward to seeing my ramp colleagues here at the museum.